Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Elaine, for uh, setting this up. Uh, I always enjoy the opportunities to uh, reach out to operators and customers and to stay uh, communicated and uh, current on the, uh, uh, the status of our products. We uh, enjoy the opportunities to uh, share our product information. At the same time, I uh, also enjoy the opportunities to hear from customers what they need so that uh, we can bring the best product to the market. And today's uh, subject is Open RAN, uh, the game changer of wireless communications. Um, the uh, Open RAN is a subject that has been talked about for a while, and you probably have heard a lot about it. Um, well, today I'm going to present this uh, Open RAN uh, subjects from a vendor's perspective. There is a lot of players in the uh, Open RAN ecosystem. I like to share as a vendor how BISOs uh, contribute to this uh, effort. And also uh, to the audience of uh, WISP customers and the rural operators uh, that, have, that have been served by Wincom technology mostly, I would have uh, uh, emphasis on this market segment as well. On to the next slide. Um, today, I'm gonna. This is gonna be an introduction of Open RAN. Uh, so I'm gonna be covering the Open RAN basics, assuming uh, that uh, audience has very limited exposure to Open RAN at this point, and its architecture. What are the Open RAN components? The ecosystem to open RAN, who are the uh, players and uh, stakeholders in this ecosystem. And lastly, I will uh, share the open RAN deployment status. The basics of open RAN, uh, open RAN is uh, by the name, it means open radio access network. Uh, RAN for short. Radio access network is the uh, uh, it is shown here. Uh, in this picture, you will see the end-to-end -end solutions that uh, provided by BISOs in terms of uh, wireless communications. And uh, as you, many of you uh, have already know, uh, we have uh, uh, products and devices and base stations and core networks. And the RAN is focused on primarily the base station uh, component of the entire network. BISOS has uh, been, uh, is an innovative uh, uh, telecom equipment vendor. We've been uh, around since 2014 and we have, Change the game of wireless communications by introducing the small cells that are uh, cost effective, uh, small in form factor, and easy to use. Uh, today, we are in the process of uh, getting into this uh, open RAN uh, development, which we think is not a game changer for the wireless communications. So we are proud to be uh, innovative and provide solutions that uh, change the games and uh, let the, uh, our operators to have products to operate uh, networks by themselves with lower cost and easy ease of use. Now, uh, let's look at Open RAN uh, with some deep dive. Um, traditionally, uh, the, the RAN radio access network is a black box. It's closed. When you get uh, base stations, you don't see what's inside and you don't uh, 
you don't have the motivation to see what's inside because everything is built as in, a, in a black box. The open run, the concept of open run is trying to make it a, a white box, a box that you can actually see what's in there so that you can pick and choose and uh, um, uh, understand what is inside and so uh, what are the tools that allows you to make this radio access network more uh, efficient, cost effective and more intelligent. How to do that? Uh, how to uh, see RAN as a white box? There are two views to see what's inside of RAN. There's a vertical view on the left that you can view the RAN, uh, the, the RAN has uh, different protocol layers that has been implemented in the RAN. Uh, at the bottom is the uh, radio, the RF unit, radio unit, that is that offers the radio uh, functions. On top of that is the layer one, the phi layer or physical layer, which implements uh, the physical uh, functionalities that uh, uh, allows the radio unit to work in different mode. On top of that is the MAC layer, which is the media access controller. Uh, which uh, uh, another layer on top of phi layer uh, provide a further more efficiency and a convergence. On the top is the network layer. This is where the uh, actually uh, user data were uh, uh, transported on top of those lower layer functionalities. We decompose the uh, RAN on, on a vertical uh, uh, vertical side uh, because we would like to uh, we would like to uh, 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 cope with the fact that today the network is uh, uh, has uh, uh, many locations that uh, you can uh, host these functionalities um, so the rule of thumb is that when you locate your resources at the a at the edge the uh, performance is better due to the, uh, uh, the 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 short delay the, the low latency right um, but however um, when you locate those functionalities toward the uh, toward the edge the utilization is not maximum so when your resources are centrally located or pulled together like in a, a cloud the resources are better utilized so there are advantages of this and disadvantages to locate these functions at different locations and the uh, uh, decomposition of these uh, network layer protocols allows you to have that flexibility that is on uh, the vertical view or horizontally, the radio access network has uh, been uh, decomposed into different uh, planes. Um, there are user planes that transports user data, U plane. There are control planes that uh, controls the use of the uh, uh, user traffic, such as uh, authentications and uh, security management. There is a management planes that uh, uh, allows you to manage the users, the uh, subscriptions, the uh, billings, etc. And lastly, there is the uh, synchronization plane. Um, it's, the synchronization plane is especially important for open RAN because you have different components working together and they need to be synchronized seamlessly. With this view, uh, you uh, will have more flexibility to build, build open RAN. Now, what are the building blocks of open RAN? Uh, the, uh, 
I see four of them. The first one is the uh, functional split. Uh, one building, uh, one build, the tools to build open RAN is to uh, functionally split the RAN, like we have seen in the last slide. There's different ways to split them. And the, the objectives of that uh, functional split is, of course, having more flexibilities to either locate the resources centralized or distributed. The second tool is the virtualization. The virtualization means you, you uh, when you when you uh, study open RAN, you will see virtual RAN or re-RAN uh, from time to time. And that virtualization basically means the decoupling of the software and hardware. And that virtualization allows you to uh, uh, virtualize the network functions so that you can use uh, hardware as a white box or commercially uh, uh, common uh, the commercial uh, platforms uh, by decoupling software and hardware. This can lower the cost of open RAN. The third uh, building block is open source. When you open up the RAN, you can introduce more vendors into the open RAN ecosystem some of them are specialized in software, some of them are specialized in hardware, and some of them are specialized in the, uh, specific functions. And by open up the open RAN uh, this way, you can introduce more vendors and to be more innovative in building open RAN. And the last uh, building block is the security. When you de decompose, the uh, open RAN into different components, you have exposed a lot of the interfaces uh, to uh, the uh, third party and you want to protect them. Um, uh, but uh, it, it, is a, it, it is an actual work, but it's worthwhile because actually when you have open RAN, you have this RAN components that are uh, uh, divided into different uh, boxes so that um, when something goes wrong you can replace that single box without having to ripping off the entire network so the security aspect has a lot of advantage by itself even though you may have to uh, be uh, considering more security measures the good news is that by uh, providing the open uh, the design you can distribute uh, you can introduce many security vendors in this play so to summarize the open ran is utilizing these tools to build an open intelligent agile and interoperable network these are mostly missing in a traditional ran network Open RAN is uh, essential to 5G. Um, where when we were looking into 5G, Open RAN is a must because of these reasons. The first reason is that 5G network is mostly deployed on high frequency spectrums, the millimeter wave, if you would. In the US, for example, we have seen the frequency bands in the 28 gigahertz range, 37 gigahertz range, and 39 gigahertz. In uh, Asia, uh, we have uh, uh, more uh, mid-range spectrums, like 2.6 and 4.9. Still, it is uh, uh, higher than the traditional cellular network. In Europe, 3.5 gig, uh, gig is available, and in Japan, 3.7, 4.5, and 28 gigahertz are available. These are all on the higher end of the frequency spectrum. And uh, the higher frequency spectrums is a challenge to the uh, 
equipment vendors um, for many reasons. High frequency means high propagation loss. The uh, RF performance compared to lower frequency is not as uh, ideal, and that is that is one challenge. The other challenge is that on higher frequencies, the battery life will suffer from higher power consumption. Uh, the 5G technologies typically in our experience as an equipment vendor, that uh, we have seen that uh, power consumption is uh, has been as high as three times more compared to 4G. And lastly, um, for a 5G deployment, they, are, they will require a larger number of base stations. And there are many white papers and studies and shows that. Uh, for example, for macro cell deployment, we have seen that uh, up to 50% more 5G base stations is required as compared to 4G. In a small, small cell deployment, like in an indoor environment, that percentage can go up from 50% to 100%, meaning that you would need twice as many base stations to deploy a 5G network as compared to 4G. These challenges has to be answered and the answer is open, right? We'll take a closer look at 5G uh, since open run and 5G are uh, hand in hand. 5G basically uh, provides a better services in three dimensions as shown on in this triangle. The first one is EMBB, the enhanced or evolved mobile broadband, gigabits communication in, in other words. It will increase the data throughput much more than 4G. The second dimension is the MMTC, the massive machine type communications. In other words, IoT, Internet of Things. And this application is typically uh, characterized by the large number of uh, 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 device connectivities. And the third dimension is the URLLC, ultra reliable, low latency communications. Application as self-driving uh, mobile healthcare is dependent on this application. So though we can see five, 5G applications can be very diverse. <clears throat> so we need a lot of flexibilities or functionalities. And that is exactly what Open Run is trying to address. Open RAN promotes openness, and it means that it can uh, uh, bring more innovations and encourage collaborations. Using the tools we talked about from the last slides, it is open, it is intelligent, it is virtualized, and it is interoperable. Open RAN also encourage the marriage or collaborations between traditional telecom operators or vendors and innovative uh, um, IT vendors to uh, bring the best of the both world, the, the telecommunication world and the IT world. Open RAN did not happen overnight. It actually evolved uh, through the last, I would say, 10 years, uh, in my experience. Traditionally, the RAN is uh, uh, deployed all at the edge. And then 
uh, it comes the uh, concept of cloud ran cloud ran means that some of the baseband functionalities or hardwares can be pulled in a centralized location such as a cloud and that the advantage of that uh, architecture is that by pool pulling the resources in a centralized locations those resources can be uh, better utilized that is the uh, uh, first stage of the development of open run i would say and later um, with the uh, introduction of cloud commuting computing right we have seen the uh, the maturity of the uh, public cloud private cloud edge cloud etc and to utilize those uh, capabilities we further uh, divide the base, baseband functions into centralized unit, CU for short, or distributed uh, unit, a DU for short. And the motivation is to, uh, you know, taking advantage of the evolution of the cloud technology. And by those open RAN, takes it to the next step. We um, build everything on commercially available platforms, common platform, general purpose platforms. Uh, there's many terminologies for that concept, meaning a hardware that uh, that is uh, decoupled from the software, a virtualized deployment of Open RAN. And this way, it, it will uh, keep the uh, cost of uh, RAN deployment further down. So the uh, state of the art operand technologies takes advantage of the uh, cloud uh, architecture and uh, the virtualized uh, functions, uh, virtualized virtualization technologies, and uh, to bring the the, the cost of operand down and uh, and and encourages the uh, collaborations with uh, from different vendors. When we talk about Open RAN, you will hear a lot of uh, people talking about split options, two split options, seven, what are they? And we'll take a closer look. These uh, slip option, uh, split options referring to the Open RAN uh, 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 functional split that we looked at earlier. The protocol stack, the protocol stack on a RAN network, will will have uh, uh, the radios, the physical layers, the MAC layers, and the network layers. And there is different ways to split them up. At the the, the very bottom, you can split the the, uh, the file layer from the radio. And uh, higher up, you can split the functional so functionalities between Mac and Phi. The further higher, uh, further high, you can split the functions between the network and Mac. Why do we split? By splitting the networks and introducing open interfaces, you can you can bring the vendors that are specialized in different layers, implementing different functionalities. And you can also um, uh, introduce more intelligence that can management it can manage the intelligence of the network layers for different purpose. And let's talk a, a look at uh, some common split options. I would like to uh, introduce the option six first. Option six split is the split between layer two and uh, layer one or Mac uh, from Phi. Uh, why, why option six I want to talk about first? Because this is the traditional split options even before Open RAN was uh, around. Many, many years ago, many, many years ago when we build the wireless networks like in 2G or 3G, option, uh, option six is already there. 
we typically split the layer two and layer one by uh, building our networks uh, uh, with uh, base station controllers and base, th base transit systems. When the network evolves into cloud RAN, we essentially introduced our, uh, uh, split option number eight, uh, where we uh, pull all the baseband, uh, the, the baseband unit or baseband capabilities in a centralized location while uh, deploy the radio unit that is, uh, that is uh, uh, providing the RF uh, capabilities and antenna um, a unit in a remote area. So option eight is where it's already uh, uh, it's already in place when we have this cloud RAM built out. Lately, you uh, we hear a lot of option three on the on the left corner uh, on this slide. Option seven split the phi layer between the lower phi and higher phi. Low phi is UL upper layer one for short, and lower phi is LL one for short. Um, why do we do that? The, um, the by splitting the layer layer one, we can uh, further uh, concentrate some of the uh, five layer processing capabilities um, and moving them away from the radio unit into the distributed unit. A distributed unit can be uh, deployed in edge cloud. And this split, this split can further simplify the network deployment and most import importantly, the network evolution. You can upgrade the network uh, by, uh, uh, with a minimal impact. Most of the, for, for example, the 5G upgrade mostly impact the uh, radio unit while you can uh, reuse a lot of the uh, uh, functionalities in, in, in a DU. So this split can simplify network evolution significantly. This is the lower layer split that is allowed by OpenRAN. Functional split is a building block or tools uh, that we have looked at. Now let's look at the, the other um, building block of Open RAN, the virtualization. In the middle, virtualization usually means you decouple the software and hardware. And both the uh, RRU hardware and DUCU hardware can be uh, built on a general purpose hardware. And with this virtualization layer like dockers and uh, hypervisors, and you can, you can build the virtualized functionalities on top of these hardware. This general purpose hardware allows you to move away from the purpose built hardware um, uh, you know, the uh, strategies that we have been uh, enjoying for many, many years, but uh, it is uh, something that uh, is getting out of date. The purpose-built hardware is very expensive to acquire, and it is very inflexible to replace. And the management of these purpose-built hardware is also very limited. You have this element managers and network managers that has only a vertical access to this hardware. And since the softwares are 
tightly coupled with this hardware, it becomes a black box and is uh, the uh, capabilities of managing them is uh, limited. It's also limited. Moving toward virtualization, rather than having an admin manager or a network manager, you would have this management and orchestration uh, functions that is um, uh, a part of the virtualization technologies. This uh, orchestrator manages virtualized functions rather than uh, uh, physical uh, uh, functions or black box functions. This allows you to manage the uh, functional entities with a lot of flexibility. For Open RAN, there is an industry consortium or association, uh, ORAN, that um, is responsible to uh, specify the architectures and specifications for the uh, standardization of these technologies. And the architecture is shown in the diagram in the middle. I would like to uh, uh, point out a couple of things that are um, um, maybe very uh, interesting to you. The first one I would like to point out is the A1 interface at the top. It is an interface between the orchestrator, orchestration and automation, and the uh, radio access network. This A1 interface will open up the um, non-real-time uh, management of the uh, RAN, basically a network management uh, equivalent from the uh, uh, traditional RAN technologies. By opening up this A1 interface, you can introduce many players that are specialized in network management or orchestration for a more efficient operation of the RAN network. The second interface I would like to point, uh, point out is the E2 interface between the uh, RIC, which stands for RAN Intelligent Controller, to the um, CU and DU components of the RAN network. This is a near real-time network management or control. This is a very important, this is, this is very new to the, uh, the open RAN. This is not available in a traditional uh, RAN. If you have operated uh, uh, traditional net, uh, cellular or fixed network, you will know that the only tools that you have is the network management for uh, fault management uh, utilizing alarms, for uh, performance management utilizing KPIs. But when it comes to uh, uh, optimize the network, the only tools you have is the configuration management, which is not real time. By opening up this E2 interface, you can manage the network in real time. The controller can monitor the data from the field that uh, in, in real time and provide a response in real time to um, optimize network operation. That being said, inside this uh, ORAN organization, there are different working groups focusing in uh, uh, different areas in uh, open RAN specification. There is a use case and overall architectures who are responsible to define architecture, the one that we looked at. There is a non-real-time RAN intelligent controller 
and A1 interface use groups that are focusing on A1 interface we looked at. There's a near real-time RAN intelligence controller and E2 interface work group that is uh, focused on E2 interface we, look, we just looked at. And there is the open front hall interface that is focused on the option seven split that we have looked at the previous slide. Besides those uh, 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 you know, typical interfaces, we have uh, various other interfaces that we cannot overlook. And uh, there is a work group uh, you know, just doing that. The open F1, W1, E1, X2, and XN interface work group. Cloud virtualization and orchestration is an uh, important part. And there is a working group dedicated in that aspect. And there is a white box hardware work group. This is the group, the, the work group that BIOS is chairing. BIOS is specialized in providing white box hardware solutions that uh, you know, drive the hardware costs down for open run deployment. And lastly, it is the stack reference design groups that uh, defines the protocol stacks. So the takeaway is that BISOS is very uh, active in the open run organization and we chair the white box hardware work group. Well, um, I've been talking about open run for 40 minutes. So you probably got an impression that the open run is kind of comp uh, complicated. There's so many uh, moving parts in that network. Uh, that is very true. That that is a true impression that if you have or have that one. But fortunately, there are um, uh, players in this ecosystem that's trying to manage manage that complexity. One of them is the telecom infrastructure. Uh, 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 the the tip um, organization that is. Uh, um, that, that Facebook is leading. The, uh, the a TIP organization sees the open RAN complexities uh, and, uh, and trying to measurement in uh, different phases. There are six of them that, uh, that has been uh, shown here. By the way, I have borrowed this uh, diagram from the, the TIP uh, website. It is a good summary of the uh, management of open RAN uh, commercialization. The first step is the interface specification, and that has been uh, taken care of by the 3GPP, which defines the 4G and 5G LTE, 5G NR technologies. And all an open RAN organization that we have uh, looked at in a previous slide. Today, most of the uh, specifications are in place, even though they are still evolving. And the second phase would be um, a, a gather the common requirements. Open RAN has a, provide a lot of po possibilities, but these common requirements will uh, help us to focus on the most common requirements so that we have the solutions to solve the most common problems. And the third phase is to uh, build a healthy vendor uh, ecosystem. Recently, we have uh, included the software de defi uh, de uh, defined RAN and the open network foundation into our vendor ecosystem. They are uh, specialized in uh, providing open source software. And a, a fourth phase would be uh, when you have different vendors that uh, have different solutions, even though they are standards compliant, 
uh, they have to be integrated, integrated and tested uh, to uh, validate their uh, conformance. And all RAN organization has built multiple open tests and integration centers throughout the world, just to, doing just that. Operators participated in this ecosystem by running field trials and de deployment, uh, gathering uh, feedbacks further from the real world. And lastly, the step four, uh, six, hopefully when this, all these things are done, we'll see the uh, a fast adoption and the proliferation of open RAN. So this is an example how the uh, uh, players, stakeholders, ensure the compliance and interoperability in uh, by uh, promoting uh, open RAN. How a vendor like BISOS uh, contributes to Open RAN? We, we, um, uh, there are uh, um, ecosystems uh, that is uh, uh, promote the Open RAN adoptions. Uh, the tip organization led by Facebook is one of them, where uh, uh, vendors can participate. BISOS uh, actually does. Biosales is a founding member of the TIP organization. Vendors can participate in the standards specifications uh, at Open RAN Alliance. Um, Biosales is uh, an active member there, uh, chairing one of the work groups over there. Vendors can participate in uh, Open RAN indoor deployment, where China Mobile is uh, doing a lot of groundwork over there. Um, BISO is participates in that. Operators can uh, accelerate the outdoor Open RAN deployment. Uh, Vodafone is doing just that, and BISO is participating as well. So, as a vendor, BISO partners with standards bodies, operators. Uh, over-the-top uh, software and hardware solution providers as a uh, vendors uh, plays a, as a key part of the ecosystem. The most recent development from BISOs is that um, by having the open RAN in place and the standard uh, uh, interfaces in place, uh, BISOs is actively work inviting and working with uh, third-party uh, software vendors to uh, uh, develop uh, software or virtualized uh, uh, controller functionalities that uh, can utilize the hardware resources of on open RAN. That is the most recent development. Another recent development that uh, BIOSA would like to uh, share with uh, with you is that uh, there is an EvenStar program that is a collaborative effort by global telecom partners to accelerate the adoption of open RAN technologies by focusing on building general purpose RAN reference design for 4G and 5G. BISOS has been selected as one of the vendors to uh, develop remote radio units. And this even star program emphasizes on a, uh, a general purpose RAN reference design so that we can source the components for radio uh, units from third parties and keeps the cost very low and keep the uh, units you know, very open that can be used by different uh, 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 vendors or integrators that uh, integrate products from different vendors. This partners was formed in, in, in January of this year and has been uh, uh, pop, uh, press releases. And I have quoted one of the press releases right here.
this is the last slide of my presentation. Um, for those who wanted to play with OpenRAN technologies, we have this uh, OpenRAN uh, demo kits that are available. This demo kits uh, packages uh, and, and OpenRAN solutions that include the core network, the DU, the CU, and the RU, the radio unit, as well as end user device, such as a, a Samsung smartphone. This uh, demo unit is available for both 4G and 5G. Notice that even though OpenRAN is essential for 5G, it is also utilized by 4G to uh, by taking advantage of the OpenRAN uh, uh, benefits. And this uh, demo unit can be uh, is available either for 4G or 5G, depending on where do you want to start. You can start, you can go straight to 5G, or you can start from 4G and later later upgrade to 5G. The demo uh, unit, as uh, just as our uh, open run products in uh, in. Uh, for outdoor and indoor are all 5G upgradable. We have built our solutions on uh, commercially available general purpose hardware solutions that um, uh, allows the decoup decoupling of softwares and hardwares. So the same hardware that you purchase today can be upgraded to uh, a 5G tomorrow. So the takeaway is that you don't have to wait for 5G to, uh, in order to uh, uh, deploy forward uh, uh, or open RAN. I have gone through all the slides for uh, this webinar and um, I would like to summarize by saying that uh, Open RAN is uh, essential to 5G. I hope I have get that message across. Open RAN is an open, intelligent, agile, and interoperable, which is uh, characterized Open RAN um, by actually the Open RAN Alliance. Open RAN deployment is underway. It's not something we are just talking about. Uh, it, it, is, it is for real. BISOS uh, enables Open RAN in both LTE and 5G. That concludes my presentation. There is, uh, you're welcome to ask me questions. <laughs>